As developers, we have a love-hate relationship with design. While we're super intrigued by design and we really want things to look super beautiful, and it's amazing to actually start developing something that looks beautiful, we don't want to spend time designing things too much, focus on XD. That's because we spend a ton of time, you know, trying to figure out how to build things and code things and make things actually come to life. So in this video, what I want to show you is some design concepts that can really enhance your user interface components, you know, using your CSS, making things much more beautiful. Now, while designers will spend a ton of time with branding and really going in depth, there are just a few key components from design that can really cross over into development that can make things look way better than what you expect. And it's not as complicated as you think. It boils down to a few things. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about that. The first thing that I want to talk about, there is a list of one, two, three, four, five, six. I have about seven items. So we're going to go through one by one. These seven concepts, I think, will really make your user interface sections and layouts look so much better. OK, so the first thing is font what designers love to call typography or type that's because they're super fancy but we like to keep it simple and it's just called fonts if you go on most websites that are designed nicely designers will hand select a set of fonts typically one to two max three that are consistent across the website and i want you to pay attention to the word consistency as a developer because that's something in design that is going to cross over into all of these seven concepts so a set of um uh fonts right so choosing one now, as developers a lot of times we're just gonna just go with the default right we see times new roman but choosing the fonts is important so if you go on to like a nike right you see here there's a font and that font is used across the board there's this headline that is a particular font but then the body has a separate font but they're consistent across so here's the headline here's the headline again all hail mom explore the outdoors and then they're used again but then these are used again if you go check out the gucci right the top headline there's a font that's used and then you can see here they're somewhat of a different font, but then they're used. It's the same font used across all the sections in different weights and different varieties. But generally, there's one to two fonts and that have different weights. And those weights are used across the different sections, but they're kept consistent so that if a button uses one sort of weight, a font weight, then all the other buttons that have the same concepts will use the same weight. So again, Font is important. You want to go ahead, go to typekit.com or you can use Google Fonts, which is free. Typekit is definitely going to give you a wide variety of fonts, um, almost unlimited usage of fonts, anything you can use here. But they're going to be much more elegant fonts than what's default. Google Fonts is going to have a lot of fonts and they're going to be great and it's free. It's going to be better than what your CSS reset is going to give you. So you want to go ahead in here and then when you go in here, You'll know how to use these fonts. You'll import the styles and you'll be, you'll, you'll be able to use all of these fonts. As a quick thing about fonts, before we hop off to the next concept, generally, it quickly, it's broken. It's not a font course, but they're broken down into serif and sans serif. Serif is going to be fonts that have decorative corners around them. You can tell because on the edges of a lot of the fonts, right, they look, it's like Times New Roman. They have this decorative um, accents at the edges. Sans serif is the absent of those decorations. And you see here, it's more straight. I like to call it straight, but they don't have those decorative fonts. So a lot of times designers will say, hey, let's go with a serif font. Let's go with a sans serif font. And then that's pretty much sometimes they're coupled as well and used in different locations. But here, this is a sans serif in this case. And again, here's a sans serif. So it's, you know, not a lot of people are using it, it really depends. It's up to the design. Now, a little bit when it comes to fonts, there's two things inside of fonts related to the key components, which is letter spacing and line height, where designers call kerning and letting and those kind of things. Designers have their own names for these things. But when it comes to development, what it is, is letter spacing and line height that make a big difference. Sometimes designers will spend a lot of time trying to figure out, hey, should we keep this? Let's play with the letter spacing, which is basically the spacing in between the letters. And that's a CSS property you can do pretty easily. Sometimes they'll keep them tight. 
Sometimes they'll actually reduce it from zero to a negative, which brings it brings the letters closer together or farther apart. But that makes a difference. So, for example, if you look here at ex Explore the Outdoors, this has a tight letter spacing. You see the letters are very close together. The designers thought that through. That's something really important. So when you want to go ahead and when you're doing your layouts, play around with the font sizes and play around with the letter spacing and the line heights. Now the line heights, as you see here again, these it's not just explore the outdoors line break, explore the line break outdoors. There's the line height is actually reduced. So even the letters are close and the lines are close, right? But if you look here at the second part, the paragraph, the line heights are longer, they're taller. So these things are thought through and again, they're consistent. So if these headlines all have um, reduced letter, negative letter spacing and reduced line heights on all the headings, it'll be the same. And same thing with the paragraphs. If it has, if it has like normal letter spacing, but line heights are larger, then you want all the padding, you want all the paragraphs to be very similar. This one doesn't have a second line, but you'll see the case in a lot of these sites, they they are doing all of these elements. So that's fonts. Those Just font itself is gonna bring things to life and just playing around with the letter spacing and line height on the headlines is gonna make things a lot more beautiful. Again, consistency is key, but consistency goes for the component itself. So if it, the, if whatever style you have for the headline, that should be the same style across the site, but it doesn't have to be the same style in your button. The button could have slightly different letter spacing, different padding and things like that. But in that case, all the buttons need to be the same. So you want to play around with that. The next thing is a lot of times when we develop, which I think is fine, especially when we're doing like just mock-ups, is we just use black and white. But color is going to be, we're on I think the fourth concept, color is going to bring things to life. Now just like fonts, designers will choose a set of fonts, one to two, maybe three max, but <clears throat> you don't wanna have a lot of different fonts. Same thing with colors, you don't wanna have a lot of different colors. One to three, <clears throat> colors that are used and then again reused and kept consistent across the website so tommy hilfiger clearly has just this white background but you don't see much else except the blue so they've only chosen the color blue there may be some accent um i'm looking for any accent colors i don't even see any accent colors they literally have white <clears throat> and that same blue used in the active links in the headline now if you see this keeps it ties everything together these are key elements choosing the color and then making sure you're consistent with that color usage across the site it just makes everything look so much cleaner right again that same blue across now there's the accent color right here so you'll see here across the site if we probably go into some of these other sections now you can see the active color is that red, right? That's their brand. So, boy, these rollovers drive me crazy because they stay. But if you see here again, so it's the blue and red. You don't see greens. You don't see, you know, oranges. You kind of just, not in the photos, of course. <clears throat> but again, you know, you see the green here in, because these are different, like, you know, element, you do need to have some of these other elements like the warning and the go and that kind of stuff. But generally the brand colors are the green and the red. So designers are going to be choosing brand colors. So you as a developer should also choose colors, choose two colors. Now, a lot of times what we have is the base color and the accent color. So you're gonna have the base color here in the blue, but the accent or the action color, which is used for active links for maybe action buttons is gonna be the red here. And you wanna keep that consistent so the hover over is here you know they're missing here in the sign in on the final store they don't have them but here they have them as these red and let me see if the gucci site has any active colors um so they're not doing any active colors they're kind of sticking with their brand maybe is mostly that gray but if we go to let's see hermes also the same here not too many action colors mostly gray um and then fendi so you can see here a lot of it's black and white but the little color brings things to life. Um, some of the little color brings things to life. So let me just want to explore the Fendi here. Again, they're not making use of a lot of colors here. But I think the Tommy is probably the good example of, um, you know, something where they bring some color to life. 
which is their brand colors. But again, you'll see this across a lot of sites. The next thing is spacing around the elements, spacing around the elements. You rarely, you will not see, um, you know, things stuck together. You don't want to see content stuck to the edge of the browser or stuck to the edge of the element. So if you look across here, there's spacing and it's also very consistent spacing. So around the element, there's negative space. A lot of designers call it negative space or white space, breathing room around the sections. And again, typically if the section is the same, you want to keep that spacing fairly consistent, except in some cases you might have a larger or shorter negative space if you want to make things have push things make them separate from each other but again here you see similar spacing around above the feature styles above the popular right now above the more to explore there's similar negative spacing but again you have the spacing and it's consistent whatever spacing is underneath the inspired by Billie Eilish between here and the paragraph if you go back up to the other one it's gonna be the same here so again and you don't see explore the outdoors stuck to the element you see the same spacing above and to the left added spacing and equal and then to the left here and to the right of the element the same spacing so again I can't reiterate the spacing is really really critical again if you go here on the Gucci site you see the head the navigation spaced to the left and right padding around the header um, and this is called what designers have a full bleed. So this is edge to edge, um, which that's a different case. That's a full screen, right? Photo. But our content all has padding. They chose this, this kind of interesting, this very thin spacing, but inside the element, you can see spacing around here. Those are things that create unique design, you know, looks. There could be, you know, you could change the amount of spacing that you want to use. And you know, again, look at this one. They have a lot of spacing here where this get fresh is not to the left nor to the top. It's kind of pushed a little bit over. They have tighter spacing in between the sections than Nike had, right? So these are all going to be selections that you choose um, to do. Um, again, the next thing that I think this one, a lot of developers sort of miss because it's not, not because they don't want to, because it's pretty difficult, is alignment. So designers spend a lot of time aligning things in Adobe XD, in Figma, in making sure things are aligned. And that is, if you look here to the left, the logo, and here, all this content is pretty much, except the slider here, is fairly aligned, right? If we go to the Tommy, all of this stuff here to the left is aligned. Now, this is, much easier for a designer because they're working in two dimensional layouts. They're putting things in XD. They can drag and drop and move things and think that things never change. Now this becomes a lot harder in, in responsive design where you're building out these things and then responsively things are moving. How do you maintain an alignment? So it's sometimes it's not always possible, but I believe like 70 to 80% of the time you can keep a lot of the alignment with breakpoints. So you decide at this breakpoint, this this thing is going to stay here and then if it breaks here then you make the adjustment now it does get can be quite difficult because of a lot of different factors in code to keep things aligned across the page but generally that is something designers focus on and the good developers here are also focusing on that so if you look at nike look at where this logo sits and look at everything as I go down the page, everything stays aligned with that logo. And it's kind of insane. And it, it's it's a very difficult thing. But if we move this around, again, responsibly, the spacing is reduced, but they're keeping the alignment from the left and to the right as much as possible. Let's go to the Gucci site, the same. Now you can see here the navigation is not necessarily aligned because it's centered, but you see these sections as you scroll down the page on the left, except for this full bleed section is aligned. Tommy Hilfiger, same thing. They're actually aligning this all the way up to the top incentives, um, all the way down the page, even the content in here that they decide on. All these alignment things, these items, they're aligned with each other, aligned with each other. These are things that a lot of developers miss or don't focus on that designers spend a lot of time on. So the alignment is going to make your user interface components look amazing. And then finally, and I'll give you one last bonus after this is the hierarchy, a hierarchy of content. 
hierarchy of font sizes is going to make things pop and make things look unique and different and draw the eye to what you want to draw it to. So here's a good example of hierarchy. Honor mom, it's a little higher. Special picks, it's a little smaller. Shop gifts, it's bigger but the but smaller than the headline and all those things move the eye around. Um, let's look at Nike. <clears throat> Here's the hierarchy. Now, it doesn't mean that things at the top have to be higher. Sometimes things at the top can be lower and the next thing could be bigger. It's all about what you want to draw attention to first, second, third. So here, featured styles is not, you know, the most important thing, but it's there. And then explore the outdoors is big. And then these are smaller. And then shop is a little bit bigger, but pretty, you know, so you can see this alignment, how the eye moves, you know, because of this different, um, not alignment, hierarchy of, of font sizes, you know, inspired by Billie Eilish. And then this goes smaller, right? You see the eye moving because the high, the, there's this very particular hierarchy back then discover more. So changing the font sizes, depending on hierarchy, depending on what's important is going to make your user interface components and websites look amazing. Now the last bonus, and this is the thing that I think a lot of developers miss and a lot of designers really, really um, focus on, which it's bad and good, but it's consistency. Designers focus on either keeping certain elements consistent throughout the brand design, right? The logo is going to be a particular size. Buttons are going to be a particular size. Navigation, the, the body text is going to be the same size across the site. And this is where CSS utility classes and focusing on good CSS practices is going to help you because you can easily make things the same. But keeping consistent, right? Not just making this bags any old font size and then making this shoes any old font size. We have to choose a utility, a, a CSS utility class for these headlines, for these labels, and make sure that whenever we use that one, it's the same font size on desktop and mobile. We want to make, not that they have to be the same on desktop and mobile, but whatever we choose for mobile, those all stay together. Ready to wear and shoes stay the same size on mobile, and then on desktop they stay whatever size they are. Those are all key elements. Consistency again to discover more. You can see they're consistent. Now, if we go to the mobile. Look at the discover more. These things get a little smaller, but they're still consistent with the scope of the element that they are. Shop now. Consistency across the spacing. Um, let's go to Tommy. Oh, they, they actually don't have uh, this. It's kind of interesting. They don't have this responsive close. I think they have a separate mobile site. But if we go here again to the Fendi, um, consistency in Fendi Flow sneakers, breezy vibes, these are the same font sizes. And then this is the same font size as that. And then the spacing is the same font size all the way on the left and the right. But then on desktop, it's the same. So consistency, consistency. All right, guys, this has been all the, I think, most important elements of design concepts that we can carry over from design into development. I think as developers, if we focus on these things, they're really going to enhance your user interface. Um, and website components and layouts. And I think this is mostly for front end developers, of course, not back end, but I hope you guys like this. If you guys like front end development, hit that like button, React, Next.js, CSS, hit that like button and subscribe.